Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 565, Thyroid Replacement, Why BioBalance Health Does It Differently. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. We are gonna talk about my favorite subject, thyroid. Part of that is that both my daughter, Dr. Sullivan, and I have had hypothyroidism since we were very young adults. And we, during that time period, have had lots of different people treating our thyroid. But luckily, when I was 23, I had a very good DO physician in Kansas City who treated me properly and effectively for my hypothyroidism. She used Armour Thyroid, she gave me the proper dose, then I could tell what, by how I felt and and the resolution of all, all my symptoms from hypothyroidism, that I had the right dose. After that, other doctors followed recommendations that are often the recommendations of internal medicine and endocrinologists that it just didn't work. They gave me a different kind. They gave me the, a, a lower dose. Nothing made me feel normal like the Armour Thyroid had when I was treated by this particular doctor way back when. This is in the um, uh, 70s. So I know what not having enough thyroid or not having the right kind of thyroid can do to people. So um, in our medical careers, Dr. Sullivan and I have a combined Um, history of 42 years of treating thyroid in our patients, uh, and we have been very successful at treating that problem, and we have done it successfully so that patients both resolve their symptoms, which is very important, and have a better blood level of thyroid. But there are many things that we do differently that other doctors don't do, and that makes the difference for our patients. So we're not usually treating thyroid in in young people because we treat people who are getting older and need hormones, but oftentimes we do because we treat the children of our patients. But it doesn't really matter how old you are. If your thyroid has stopped working, it is vital to your health that you get thyroid replacement, which is oral. It's it's just a, a medication that you take orally. It's a tablet and that you get enough thyroid medication so that all of your systems work well. It affects every single thing in your body, and it affects your brain. If you don't have enough, you're depressed, and you might be given an antidepressant instead of given more thyroid. It actually can uh, make your hair fall out if you don't have enough thyroid. It it makes you gain weight. Low thyroid actually makes your... um, makes your lipids go up, your LDL goes up, if you don't have enough thyroid. So many of the things that you get multiple drugs for can be treated in in certain cases. If your thyroid's low, you get the right thyroid medication, many of those drugs can go away. So the pieces of the puzzle that are important for you to know so that when you talk to a doctor, you'll find out how they uh, do thyroid replacement or you can have a discussion with them about why you need the amount of thyroid you need based on your symptoms. But two of the pieces of the puzzle should be known by doctors but rarely are. One, the first one is in the insert that you get when you go to the pharmacy and you get thyroid medication, whether it be Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or Armour Thyroid, in the insert, it literally says that the first thyroid dose that should be given to you should be based on your weight. And they give you give doctors actually a formula. And the formula is this. Your weight in pounds divided by 2.2 and that sum multiplied by 1.7 is the micrograms of levothyroxine or Synthroid that you need. 
Now, if you're getting armor thyroid, we then we then adjust it for the difference between levothyroxine and, and armor thyroid. But that is what you should be started with. I get so many people who their doctors just went, nah, I'm going to put you on 25 milligrams of thyroid. Well, I'm um, 135 pounds. If I was put on that small a dose, all that would do would be to completely shut down my own thyroid so it made no thyroid and not give me enough to live on. So I would literally get worse. If um, some people come in to see me, they're 250 pounds and they're on 50 micrograms. That's crazy. So, I mean, that, that isn't helping them at all. And their lab in response sometimes looks like the reference ranges on the lab, but I'll tell you why that doesn't work either. So you should, your initial dose should be based on weight and follow-up doses should be based on symptoms and lab work. And that can be adjusted up or down. There are many things that, uh, that affect the oral dose of thyroid. One is your um, liver function, how fast you break your thyroid down. Two is um, genetics. Sometimes people have uh, a need to have a higher thyroid just to keep their blood pressure up and their pulse up to normal. And so certain of us need a higher level. If we're on multiple drugs, then we process our thyroid faster, so we need to have a higher dose of thyroid. So there are many things that come into this that your doctor needs to know. But the first thing is written in your insert and should be the first thing they think about. The second thing is also written in, your, in the insert, and that is the guidelines for what should result in your labs when you take follow-up labs. So the labs that are drawn after you have started thyroid or changed your thyroid dose, of T, if you're tested for TSH, TSH that is acceptable for when you're on thyroid is different than the TSH reference range on your lab, and your doctor should know that. We do not try to achieve the same reference ranges in, that are la listed on your lab. We try to achieve a, a dose or a level of less than 1.0 TSH. It shuts your own TSH down so your own thyroid isn't s stressed, isn't pushed to work. We're replacing your thyroid. We're not just adding to it. If you just give a little bit of thyroid, it completely shuts your thyroid down anyway. But we want your TSH to be less than one. That's one of the ways we know that you have enough thyroid. That is listed in the insert as well from the pharmaceutical companies. So that should be known by your doctor, but clearly it isn't because oftentimes my patients will have their lab drawn at their doctors and they freak out and say, you're on too much thyroid because your TSH is too low. Well. It should be less than one. So they haven't read the insert or they haven't updated um, their CMEs or something because that's necessary to have your TSH suppressed if you're on the right amount of thyroid. One of the worst things that's happened is that on the lab sheet that gets printed out to a doctor, we depend on lab sheets and the ranges that they have for called reference ranges. They don't say normals anymore. And there's a good reason they don't say normals because they don't, they don't have those listed as what is normal for young, healthy people. So when you're looking at a reference range for free T4, which is one of your thyroids, and free T3, which is your other thyroid, you're looking at a range that was developed by the big, the big lab companies by just taking everybody they tested that year, sick, old, no thyroid, on thyroid, and then they put it into a bell curve, and they say, if you're out here, you're abnormal. But if you're here, which is average for people who go to the lab and get their blood drawn, which they're not usually normal, they're not usually healthy, so you will be normal for sick people. That's not what I consider normal. Um, that's how they obtain their reference ranges for thyroid and for some other hormones. So for this particular problem, they have been lowering 
and lowering the normals for thyroid. So people are walking around with low thyroid, not taking any thyroid, because their doctors go, well, you're within range. Well, you may be within range for sick and old people, but that's not healthy because thyroid drops and goes down as we get older, which is not necessarily healthy either. And if we're sick, our thyroid turns off, our thyroid drops drastically because you have to maintain your weight, your body shuts it down when you are, you're not on any thyroid, but if you're, you have your own thyroid and you're sick, your thyroid drops because it's saving your body so that you can deal with your sickness and not lose too much weight and die. So thyroid generally drops with illness. So if you're sick and you're going to the lab for, for any kind of thyroid test, they're, ta they're not saying, oh, are you well? Are you less than 30 years or less than 40 years old? Are you, you know, are you here for a non-thyroid problem? They're just taking whatever thyroid test that you get and throwing it into the mix. This information was not easily obtained from Quest and LabCorp. They basically had to be um, maybe slightly harassed to give that information to us. But we, we pursued it because we, it made no sense to us that every year the normal T3 and normal T4 should keep dropping down to such a low level. And it made no sense that this was supposed to be accepted as normal. So, scientifically, the way we develop normal ranges is not this way. Scientifically, we, we have groups of people, we call for people to sign up for, you know, a medical test. They're paid, to, they're actually paid to get these tests. They're, they have to fall, they have to actually fall into certain um, quality um, areas, like they have to be young, they have to be healthy, they can't be on thyroid medicine, they can't be obese, they can't be, uh, they can't be on any drugs. They can't. So we're looking at, when we test them, a normal for healthy people, which is what we're trying to achieve by giving you back your thyroid. We're not looking to make you normal for a sick person, which is what that reference range refers to. So that's the scientific method. It used to be used, it, we used to have levels of T3, free T3 and free T4 that followed those rules. And the level of free T4 used to be 1 to 2.5. Now it is 0 0.8, 0 0.7. So the lower end is going way down. So that means the fewer people who are diagnosed with hypothyroidism, fewer people who are treated, more sick people. And a lot of other drugs given to those people to make up for that, like statins. The T3 should be 3 to 4.5. On the, sh on the sheet, it says it, you're fine if you're 2.5, two, every time I see it, it's a little bit lower. So 2.5 um, is considered normal but it's not, and it goes up to 4.4. So my normal is, what it used to be, is 3 to 4.5. So I have to write that in every time I look at the labs and explain it to people, explain why that normal is not normal. So that's why I'm doing it here. So you won't have to go through this process of figuring out why you feel terrible, you have all the symptoms of low thyroid, and you're not being treated. So when we look at bad numbers um, in any kind of study, uh, whether it be research or accountants, accountants always say, if it's garbage in, it's garbage out. That's exactly what I'm saying. If we're looking at the normals that are on LabCorp and, and Quest, we're looking at garbage. And you can't be judged by those normals. And if we're looking at a TSH, while you're on thyroid, it should be less than one. And they aren't writing that down. They don't give any qualifications of what that TSH means. So that TSH isn't normal for somebody. The one that they list isn't normal for somebody who is actually on thyroid. So keep that in mind when somebody says that you need to lower your thyroid dose because your T4, T3 is 
is out of range. I'm trying to get people back to the middle of the range that I just listed and to get their TSH less than one. That's my goal. When I get them there, all their symptoms are usually gone. And that's the goal. Symptoms, relief, and numbers that actually make sense based on healthy people. Another reason people get the wrong blood test, excuse me, get the wrong um, treatment for their thyroid is that their doctors don't tell them that they have to not take their thyroid on the morning of their, of their blood test. Any oral drug that you take, if you're testing what that oral drug is, is actually doing or the, or the byproducts of that oral drug, if you test it right after taking it, within several hours of taking it, you're going to have a very high level because every oral drug goes way up and then comes down to what it does during the rest of the day. So if you are not told, hold your thyroid till after the test, then your test is going to be abnormally high. And they're going to, they're going to say, oh, your T4 and your T3 are so high, we're going to drop your dose. Well, you're going to get your symptoms back. You have to not take it that morning and then get your blood drawn to see what your body's experiencing during the previous day and night. So I would recommend that even if your doctor doesn't. Um, I've had several people recently come in and when I write their thyroid for them and adjust their dose, I say every time, you have to take your thyroid alone in the morning and don't eat or drink anything for 20 minutes, and that's, that's a hard 20 minutes. You could go longer, but you can't have anything else, not coffee, nothing but water for 20 minutes after you take your thyroid because you have to absorb it and you can't take other pills. You can't take food. You can't take coffee. You can't have a soda. So I tell my patients that every time I write a thyroid prescription, and it is on the thyroid prescription. Read it. Because if you take it with something else, you're just throwing it away. Most of the time, it is very fragile. It is not going to be absorbed by your stomach. And if you have all these other things in your stomach with it, it has to be alone. So remember that. Even if you're not told that, several of my patients were very angry. They'd taken thyroid for years. Their blood levels were very low. They had many side effects and illnesses secondary to a low thyroid for years. And they'd never been told that. And they drank coffee and they ate breakfast with it and they weren't getting enough. So we had to go back and see what their levels were when they did take it properly and do it the next morning without taking their thyroid right before the test. So please remember that if you take thyroid. Lots of, lots of people, and this is the last thing, lots of people go to their doctors and their doctors don't really talk to them about their symptoms of low thyroid. They don't say, are you still fatigued? Have you gained weight? Oh, look, your um, cholesterol went up. Um, are your legs swollen? Are your hands swollen? Is your hair falling out? Do your eyebrows over here fall out? They don't, they don't ask questions about your symptoms, and they should, because symptoms are just as important as blood work and the blood work is not, has the wrong ranges, so that's not helping us any. But the symptoms are just as important, and if you have enough thyroid, your symptoms of hypothyroid should be gone. Now, that's just a fact. So that's very important for your symptoms of low thyroid to be gone. And you should tell your doctor, if they don't ask you, th the symptoms that you have that I just listed that are still there and that you want to or you think you need more thyroid. We always make sure that our patients don't have um, high pulse, high blood pressure. I mean, we, they may have to be treated for high blood pressure, but in general, the high pulse um, can indicate that they're having a reaction to the thyroid. Dose or type of thyroid needs to be changed. However, if you have your symptoms, still, and your dose is too low, that's even more devastating than if your pulse, pulse is high, um, because we can adjust the dose down. But if it's low and you're told that's normal, it's not. So whenever your doctor says, oh, we're going to lower your thyroid, 
and your symptoms are still there, and he's using the usual range that the labs give him, you should question him, and you should, you can hand him this blog that we're, we're going to um, have on our website alongside our, um, our health cast. Because these are things that maybe they don't know, or they haven't retrained, or they learned everything 40 years ago. So, thyroid's very important. It's key to your health. You have to have enough. And if your thyroid is sick, you need to have it replaced. So, please remember that. I hope this helps you with dealing with uh, your healthcare providers. And we'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.